We're speaking with Ernest Morell, who is the inaugural Macy Professor of Education and Director of the Institute for Urban and Minority Education at Teachers College, Columbia University. The, the theme of DML 2015 this year is Equity by Access. Um, tell us about your session and, and why you are excited about it this year. Well, the, the theme of our strand is um, about digital media and learning and youth civic engagement. Um, we're really excited about it because, you know, we can see in a lot of spaces outside of school that young people are using media, they have instincts around media, they're producing films, they're engaged in social media, um, they are using media to create their own social movements, but at the same time, there's not as much of a, of a take up about that in school. So we want to do a couple things with our strand. We want to think about what can we learn from watching the beauty and brilliance of young people as they create their own social movements in digital spaces without adults? And what does that look like? Um, are there some spaces inside of school and outside of school where um, young people and adults are working together? Um, how are they negotiating those spaces? What does that look like? What kind of support do young people need from adults? What does it mean for adults to be involved in this kind of work with young people? Um, how do you know whether you're giving enough or not giving too much or overstepping your bounds? And um, who's asking good questions about this? The third area we're really concerned about is um, who's taking this up in the classroom? Uh, whether that's a history teacher or a math teacher or an English teacher, a fifth grade teacher, a high school teacher. What does it look like to engage both digital media and youth social movements inside of a formal discipline in a K-12 classroom? So we're hoping to get teachers and their students to come and talk about their successes, their failures. I think one question we're really asking is not necessarily does this work or doesn't this work, but what kinds of questions are you asking about the environment to actually learn? If you're going to have equity by design, um, one of the things that you need is a feedback loop. So how are we getting feedback about these projects? You don't have to come and defend the project as perfect, um, but you should be able to tell us about how you are learning to think more deeply about this work to make it better. So hopefully we'll have examples from each of those three, um, as I listed, uh, youth to youth movements without adults, kind of youth adult interactions outside of formal schooling environments, and then kind of teachers and students working together inside of classrooms. Well, uh, I'm a believer uh, and have <laughs> been for a while. Uh, I talked with someone who you may know, Danielle Filippiak. I don't know whether you know her, but, but... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, when I talked to her about this subject, uh, something that you said, what became clear, was that you really have to start by listening to the students mm -hmm. about what they're doing in their lives. Yes. Something that they're really not always accustomed to their, their teachers asking. you have any kind of uh, hints about how you go about actually finding out or making them comfortable enough to let you in on how they're using their media outside of the classroom? That's a great question. I think that, you know, uh, so by definition, we're considered teachers, right? And teacher has connotations of holding the knowledge and disseminating knowledge, right? And so there's, there, there aren't always um, built-in theories about teachers as learners from students. And, 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 but students also come into many classrooms with those expectations. Uh, I don't have to offer much. I, I do what I'm told. So I think this concept of whether it's a flipped classroom or a student in classroom, we've been calling it different things for a long time. It's as a teacher, how do I make known to my students from the very beginning that this is a shared learning space, um, that I ask questions as much as I make statements, uh, and that we try as much as possible to center the productive work in the classroom around connecting to students' real interest in the world. Uh, so the question isn't um, how can I become a better writer, but how can I use writing to engage issues that really care about me? If, if the question's asked in that way, I'll probably be more, uh, I'll be more willing to become a better writer, but I'll also be willing to share more about my life. So it's not just asking, um, tell me about your life. It's, I, a lot of times I start with the questions, if you could change the world, what would you change? Right. What's something that you really see that you want to make a difference in? And, and that's how we get into these conversations. It's not necessarily 
um, teachers prying into the student's life as much as um, together asking questions that will reveal students' interests and concerns. And, and being a real guardian of that knowledge and acting upon it. So the first time they tell you something, then it goes in one ear and out the other, and then you're back to Macbeth. You lose trust, right? So it's not only listening, it's that we have to show that we are about action. We're acting upon the things that, that the students are saying that they care about. Well, again, I'm a believer. I, I call it co-learning. Although yeah. I teach with, with, with college students, I really have to tell them, you've been trained to expect to do what I tell you to do. But yeah, right. you're experts at being students. Um, yeah. Maybe I can give you some of my teacher power and you can take a little bit more responsibility for your learning. And usually they begin to react to that. Yes. Well, um, this is a, 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 I think, very important subject and I know it will be a terrific session. So thank you for your time, Ernest. Thank you so much, and, uh, and I hope that everyone that's listening will submit proposals to come to the conference. I think it's one of the, the smartest and most timely conferences, themes, foci that I've seen in quite some time.